Hi, we're, we're half, half of Russian, Russian Spring, Spring, and welcome to the Punkio Podcast. Podcast. Please mind the gap between the train and the... Ah, oh, whatever. Welcome to the Punkio Podcast, the show that brings you unsigned punk music, regular interviews, news, reviews, and more. Thanks for tuning in and subscribing. Here are your hosts, Tim Marshall and Tom Hawkins. Hi all, welcome to the Punkio Podcast. I'm Tim. And I'm Tom. And today we have a rushing spring on. How are you doing, guys? You all right? What's up, dude? Um, we're good. How are you? Yeah, we're not too bad. Best we can be. Smooth. But, exactly. Uh, exactly. Yeah, cracking on with, with life and loving the podcast. Just dude, enjoying I ourselves, love really. what you guys yeah. are doing. I checked it out before I came here. It was really, really good. He's Solid. literally binge watched one episode, went, yeah, this is all right, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just a nice right. message ooh, in the ooh, morning, story, I guess. Ooh, ooh. <laughs> No, it's fine. Uh, it's the same. I was like, "Who have we got on today? We've got some some rushing some rushing water, some rushing springs." <laughs> oh my god! The no. Russian springs. What? Oh, why are we interviewing yeah. the Russian oh, yeah. springs? <laughs> yeah. Well, that's better than our other name. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> I think we get that name quite a lot about our podcast as well. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my god. I don't podcast. like to brag. <laughs> yeah. Well, when we started out, cast. everyone thought that our name was Russian, like the country. Russian so, yeah. springs. Yeah, Russian Spring, like the Arab Spring, but in Russia. And they're like, "Are you guys communists?" And we're like, "We're not communists." But you know. I was thinking, like, maybe you're like a uh, Russian car park, like you're just Russian Springs, like you know. You yeah, know. well, so that's I mean, that's a way to think of it. Well, the that way, is, you know, you know, it was uh, originally like we came up with it as like an homage to Rights of Spring, the band, like the right, band yeah. in the 90s. Um, but it also is like a double entendre because it's like talking about like flowing water, but also like stopping being depressed in the winter and getting like into the spring as quick as possible yeah, yeah. So, you know that's kind of where the name came from but it was the least stupid sounding one that we could come up with oh it's just a good name to be honest it's it it's, it's different <clears throat> i mean yeah well it's not taken on any social media so we grabbed all that <laughs> yeah i mean i i had a quick look on <clears throat> on spotify and i think maybe two tracks came up but you were the first band that came up um, which is great <laughs> yeah, to write to your band name and have that come up is really good. So, I mean, if you start, I'm sorry, typing I was too band. busy on like quick fit looking for some Russian springs. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Brilliant. There we go. All right, guys. So just tell us a bit about yourselves, what you two do in the band. Um, so yeah. my name's Austin. I'm the uh, lead singer, um, kind of chief songwriter, um, rhythm guitarist, um, sometimes pianist. Sometimes yeah. drummer, sometimes right. bassist. Sometimes Is it just you? <laughs> Are you just a solo act? Just, just, you brought yeah, your right. mate along just so you can yeah, make yeah, yeah. it sound like you've got a band, all right? It's, it's a it. solo act. We all know. Oh, yeah, totally, right? And then, um, Eric, who are you? Uh, I am Eric. Hi, Eric. <laughs> yeah. Hi, Eric. I am, uh, hi. I am the, uh, an alcoholic. <laughs> and I'm an alcoholic, yeah. Uh, and I am the drummer of Rushing Spring. And uh, that's probably all I contribute to <laughs> when compared to Austin's <laughs> list of traits. Listen, all right, Austin <laughs> brought whatever he thought this was. He thought this was a job interview. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We're not, we're not yeah. starting a band, mate, all right? You have to be like, I can do this in the band, can do that in the band, can do all of these things in the band. Oh, <laughs> well, I thought we were forming the Punkio podcast band. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, we, we can do yeah, we can do Yeah, but what, P- well, P- Tim P- now P- says we can. Tim's the boss. Yeah. <laughs> yes, Same. Tom. I'm the boss. <laughs> well, I'm the boss. Story, um, there you go. I, I basically annoyed Eric into joining our band. So join. This, I actually join, bullied him join, online. This join, is a true story. Join, yeah, join, yeah, join. I bullied Eric online and then he ended up joining the band. Love it. So like we we don't we encourage this, by the way, on the Punkier podcast. We no. do not encourage bullying of any form, even if it does mean you yeah, get yeah. Well, band unless band. it gets you into an awesome rock band. <laughs> yeah. So, so <laughs> normally I do not condone bullying. <laughs> But basically how it happened was, um, so we formed in um, 2018. So we've actually been together for two years. Um, And in 2019, our original drummer left and um, we were looking for a new drummer. And I went online to this like band networking website and I found Mm -hmm. Eric and everyone else was like 60 years old. And like, that's like the kind of people that like you find on band networking websites. That's what I was looking for, to be honest. He was kind of, <laughs> yeah, he was kind of looking for a sixty-year-old Grateful Dead jam band or something, yeah. right? The dad, yeah. band. dad band. Are you sure you want like granddads in your local area? <laughs> oh well, that's kind of actually where it was. But, oh um, right, yeah, yeah. Right, we all right. make those mistakes. We all click. Yeah, on I followed one of the time. links on those websites, and um, I ended up meeting Eric. 
But um, I mean, he was the only dude that was like under 30 and he was wearing like a kiss shirt and like a drum kit. And I was like, this is the fucking guy. That's, that's right? what I like, This is yeah. the guy. Excuse and... me, man. You like kiss and you look <laughs> under 30. Yes, I, I like kiss and I am under 30. You're hired. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no, you don't even know what I do. It's just like you're hired again. Yes, right. Exactly what don't we're say for. less. No more. <laughs> so... Our band is nothing like kiss, but I want you. I want yeah, to say, that's exactly you? it, right? And um, <laughs> so, like, I, I messaged him and I was like, hey, dude, this is the band and you're going to join us. And then, like, he didn't answer. So then I was like, fuck, what up. the fuck? So like then, hard to get. Yeah, he played hard to get. So the next day I messaged him again and I was like, I would really appreciate it if you checked out the band. <laughs> <laughs> and then the next day i'm like check out the band and i did this like yeah. every day for like a week until he <laughs> fell back for me and then he like checked it out and he was like okay this is actually pretty rad and then we met up <laughs> and then he joined the band a week later so this is like the only situation where like online bullying actually worked <laughs> is he holding you, you against you on your screen, screen. You might not be able to see it on your screen, but I'm actually handcuffed. To a I was going to say, is he holding you against your will? Yeah. Can you blink twice? <laughs> blink <laughs> twice. <laughs> we will get help to your location. Oh, Podcast dear. is actually a big skin operation to free me. <laughs> <laughs> and see, the other thing Lovely. that he didn't tell you about yeah. is that I live on his couch, right? <laughs> and I don't pay rent. <laughs> <laughs> I have, you know, the Punky Oak podcast is connected to all law enforcement. We are actually the Federal Bureau of Investigation, and you're under arrest, my friend. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, oh, yeah. Plot yeah, twist. You cheated yeah, right. so good. Yeah, under nice arrest. Twist. <laughs> awesome. Oh, all right. Yeah. So, go on, carry on. Have you got a bit more yeah, to say? No, so, we, um, we formed in 2018. Eric joined the band in 2019, and I kind of consider, like, that point is kind of, like, when we kind of, like, became, like, full-on, like, the current like lineup and then um we did like for six or seven months we just like gigged religiously like every weekend and sometimes and during the weekday just like two times a week um mm. at just the shittiest dive bars we could find yeah <laughs> just like put in the work and um yeah we were starting to build like a local following and then COVID happens and we got shut down we were supposed to go on our first tour mm. that didn't happen um but, you know, it is what it is. And, uh, you know, we ended up, it ended up being a good thing because uh, I found, so we ended up signing with um, Get Even Entertainment at first, which nothing against them. We ended up going with Words Bond after a while, but it all happened. Um, they're still great dudes, but it happened like completely random as everything does in my life, right? Yep. So I friend of this dude, Jack White, who still is a close friend on Facebook, specifically because his name was Jack White and he's not the real Jack White. It's fake one. Right, he's fake. Jack. <laughs> yeah, Jack Off White. Yeah, Jack Off White. Off -white. <laughs> Jack Eggshell White. Yeah. Jack Love Magnolia. It. I understand. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, um, so because there was no gigs, we like had dropped our song that groceries, which you'll listen to later. And I was looking for alternative ways to promote it, so I was just like messaging freaking everybody that I could find on my friends list. And, yeah. He like, he was like, this sounds great. I'm sending this to our lower management. And I was like, what the hell are you talking about? And I like went and I was like, oh shit, this guy owns a management firm. <laughs> and that's kind of how we got broken in into like the actual like national scene. And it was completely by accident. <laughs> nice. nice. Uh, so good. if COVID hadn't happened, we would have ended up with our current manager, Eric, who was just the freaking man. And it's not this Eric, it's a different Eric. <laughs> Sweet. Also held against you <laughs> as well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I, I didn't bully this one. <laughs> Thank God. I was gonna say, if you can bully management companies, fair play to you. have got some balls. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Definitely. No, he bullies me. It all balances out. Is that okay, right? Fair enough. So you're like, ah, bullying downhill. Yeah. Yeah. Right. It's a chain, you know. And then I Eric takes all that stress on the drums. Yeah. Yeah, I promise to anybody it. watching this and to you guys that I'm like the sweetest person. That the only person I bully is Eric. Oh, I'm, I, I I can get that. You seem like a lovely guy when I'm chatting to you. So it's all good. It's all good. I can see right for you. <laughs> Tom, Punk. I actually have a question for you, bro. I have a question for you. For me or for, for him? You. No, for, for me. You, oh, okay. Yeah, because I was watching I was watching your episode with Glimmers and I noticed that you were wearing a short sleeve t-shirt and I saw that you had tattoos. I do. Okay. I do. So, so I have tattoos too, as you can see, obviously. And I have a question for you because I've been thinking about this. 
do you ever wear when you wear a long sleeve shirt are you ever walking around thinking to yourself these people don't know that i have tattoos yes so there have been many <laughs> many many times so one of the the first times this happened was when i was working for a previous company i used to go to the the in-house gym that we used to have and there was this time where none of my mates knew I had tattoos and I'd just be like wearing a shirt as such, unbutton the shirt in the change room. They were like, holy shit, man, you've got tattoos. And I'm like, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah dude, yeah. every time I walk out and I'm like wearing a jacket or something, I'm like just thinking to myself, I'm like, these people don't know. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> they don't know. They don't know about my own. Yeah, this is, yeah, yeah, this is the thing. On a regular basis. Oh, it's like yeah. having a superpower. It is, yeah, it is. Exactly, like, I went yeah. recently, um, revealed... I think it was like a year ago uh, that I've got tattoos to my to my work because I came in one day and I've always kept like jumpers and stuff. This is why I'm in this. I had a conference call today, so I was wearing this. Yeah. Um, but I, I we were at a social and I just wore short sleeve. Never was like, you've got tattoos. You're like the person we'd least expect to have tattoos. And I'm like, it's because I'm a nerd, isn't it? Because you look at me and you go, you're a nerd. You're not supposed to have that skin heart. Ugh. And I'm like, yeah, but look at me, man. I've got like this cool shit on my chest. I've got like stuff written on my knuckles and no i haven't i haven't got stuff written on my knuckles. Uh, if it was it was in biro and i've rubbed it off now and it would say like oh, love dear. dad love and life. mom like yeah. love dad and mom and, yeah <laughs> love bobs okay. uh like because it I, di- I didn't know how to spell it um tom keep so, your hands up i wonder if i could kind of edit it in there you go. <laughs> no. Oh, no. Dude, every tattoo i've ever gotten and i've lost count at how many i have has been an impulse decision See, I've got all of mine collectively sorted uh, because I go through this thing of going, I, I want all of mine to have a story. I have mm-hmm. some sort of collective meaning. So I'm one of these these guys where someone goes, you got a meaning for all those tattoos? And I'm like, yes, yes, I do. Sit down, take a cup of water. It's going to be a long journey. And then it's like <laughs> Elder Scroll, uh, kind of like you just black out and wake up and it's like, Love that it. was a long time ago. <laughs> uh, <laughs> they're already knocked yeah. out they're just like oh fuck it i've can't be bothered with no but all oh. of them have a, a, a story and connection and after lockdown i've got a two-day sitting booked in with uh my the guy i get my tattoos done a guy called chris uh nice. absolutely great guy complete metalhead who um who i absolutely <clears throat> absolutely fucking adore he's just such a lad and he does some of the best tattooing i've ever yeah. seen so he's done majority of my tattoos everywhere except the one on my chest and the one on my back because i got them done locally and then my first two tattoos but yeah i mean you guys have got you've gone for the smaller tattoo approach i've gone for like the fuck it i'll sit here for sit hours and just get a whole bicep done or i'm really excited about that that. (laughs) because um so like like i said like i'm i every tattoo as i've ever done has been an impulse decision so it's just like um because i have a bunch of friends up here that happen to be tattoo artists and they're all kind of connected to the music scene so i know everybody so it's like whenever i want a tattoo is kind of whoever picks up for (laughs) yeah (laughs) but this entire sleeve like i got the majority of it done in like maybe three or four sittings where i was just sitting for an hour i was like tattoo on me whatever you want to tattoo and i don't know if you can see this but i have like a cat like a pusheen cat love it (laughs) that's a bold decision my friend that's a bold decision there you go i I would reveal my tattoos but unfortunately that would have to mean i have to get stripped down on camera and since we've only just recently we've got an only fans yeah i've just said i just (laughs) because someone decided (laughs) after the last podcast we needed an only fans all right, okay. I am not on that shit. It's just, we don't no. need an OnlyFans. I did it just for a joke, dude, honestly. Yeah, I just thought those pop punk kids groups, honestly, it's just, all it oh, is, man. it's OnlyFans at the moment, that's all it. All he bangs on about, all he bangs on about, oh, <laughs> I've got an OnlyFans. Oh, I've got an OnlyFans. <laughs> really? Oh, I've done it as a joke, but we have an OnlyFans now. And I'm like, great, that's fine, but it's three o'clock in the morning. Leave me the fuck alone. <laughs> all right, I'm trying to sleep. Dude, <laughs> but I've, I've got an OnlyFans. I got an OnlyFans, the band would leave me because I wouldn't shut up about it. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. I'm going to post it to you back now, Tom. Like, hang on, let me just text you it. <laughs> Only fan. Fuck off. <laughs> Who is this guy texting me? I've only sent it to you once. Why does he keep sending me links for his only <laughs> Why do I want to join? This is the weirdest question. <laughs> I don't want to join this. I already know this. <laughs> I've seen all there is to see already. <laughs> Exactly. Terrible. So here's my first proper question to you guys before we jump into the music. Yeah. What are your favorite bands at the moment? <laughs> the bands that uh, I like, at least. Um, right now, um, I think I mentioned this to you over uh, Messenger, Tim, but I'm fucking so hard with um, 
specifically the song All My Friends by LCD Sound System. That song slaps so hard. Um, but I mean, in general, I'm a huge fan of like 80s college rock and like post punk. Like, um, yeah. the replacements are my favorite band of all time. It's a good um, band. The Smiths, even like power pop, like uh, Big Star or Joy Division, New Order. Um, I'm on a huge bleachers kick right now. Like Jack Antonoff, I simp for Jack Antonoff so hard, dude. Like Jack Antonoff, if you're watching this, Rushing Spring <laughs> wants you to produce our next record. Um, hit us up, I simp for you for a fair price. Yeah, right, please. But um, <laughs> no, he um, he like revitalized Taylor Swift's career. Yeah. He was like the mastermind behind <clears throat> that. And dude, it's funny because like I'm so f- I'm in I'm insane because like. <laughs> <laughs> like two months ago I remember this very clearly like in the middle of seasonal depression season I was like uh I was like on the verge of tears because I'm not Jack Antonoff and I don't have a Grammy <laughs> yeah <laughs> well it's a tough that. life it's a tough one it is a tough yeah life. Oh, no we yeah. haven't got one yet either to be honest to honestly suck. I'm just waiting for it to come round <laughs> any second now yeah. I keep well, I was about to say, we'll send it to you in the mail Tom don't worry yeah but, yeah, no, like Bleachers, um, even like, but the, like his stuff with Lana Del Rey is awesome. Um, but like of all time, it would be the replacements, like the Smiths, New Order, Joy Division, that whole kind of era. Husker Du, even. Husker Du, Husker Downs. Even like Green Day is great. Um, Mike Hem is cool. Um, like the whole 2000s emo is rad. Even like the new Midwest emo, I fuck with heavy, like uh, Modern Baseball or I'm Glad It's You is killing the game right now. Oso oh, Oso. Oh, we had tickets to see Oso oh, Oso, oh, but that got canceled because of COVID. Yeah. <laughs> but that's enough out of me. Uh, yeah, I guess for me, my favorite, well, childhood favorite band, uh, Kiss. <laughs> Kiss Army looking right at you. Uh, I mean, after that, like, uh, I got into like Blink 182 a lot in like high school. I think as every other teenager does in those weird years. Yeah. No, no, no one does. No one does. You're completely <laughs> unique on that front. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, yeah. And after that, yeah, like similar to Austin, just kind of into like the Midwest emo scene now. Uh, just a lot of the story so far, right? Yeah, the story so far. Pine you know, Grove. Pine Grove definitely is a great band. I know his favorite bands better than he knows his favorite bands. Yeah. He's just like, these are your favorite bands. These are my favorite bands. It's like your the, favorite uh, bands are these. Uh, yes, they are. The Force yeah, and Star cool. Wars. Brilliant. <laughs> it's just like, like <laughs> my like my eyelids as I close them. Because... <laughs> Oh, we're, we're more and more convinced that we may need to call the FBI on you guys. <laughs> <laughs> the more you joke about it, the more I'm just going, okay? And just to remind you, what's the next question we have? Oh, oh yeah, God. what's your exact location and what's your movements in the next two hours? Also, what's the range of your car? Also, what color is your car? Also, can you describe your height build, what you're currently wearing, and uh, <laughs> geographic location? Oh, my God. Did I? Wait, Eric, you know that I, I called the FBI once, right? What? Oh, I okay. <laughs> I didn't know the story. So there's the story behind this. Um, I got contacted by my pharmacy about refilling a script that I didn't put a request in for, and um, I freaked out about it. <laughs> and so I was like, "What do I do in this situation?" Well, it's kind of like fraud, so I should call the FBI. <laughs> so I called the FBI. <laughs> and um they had me on hold and then like i was, they were like fbi how can i help you and i was like so if this happened they're like yeah well we deal with like million dollar like frauds like you're talking about like somebody who probably <laughs> put in the wrong error code on a script or something oh, <laughs> and i'm dear. like oh i'm so sorry thank you so much for calling <laughs> Have a good day. <laughs> Brilliant. I, mean, I wouldn't know how to call them. Tom, what's our version of the FBI? Uh, good question. I think we've got the <laughs> um, N- N- NCA, National Crime Agency, which is slightly... Potentially. So that's ours. We've just I don't got know. the normal police. <laughs> yeah. We've got the normal police. We've then got the police that then go around in unmarked cars, which we call oh. the police. <laughs> yeah. We have ARU, which is armed response. And then we have the National Crime Agency, which is the, the kind of pillar off from that. 
And then we have, uh, and then we have mm, Line of know. Duty, which is a show in the UK, which is an accurate description. <laughs> yeah. Very uh, accurate. AC thirteen, yeah. I think they're called, or something like that. Yeah, we have. Go well, around cracking on bent coppers. Yeah, <laughs> that's, it. that's it. Police interceptors. That's a good one as well. Police oh, interceptors. We've got road wars as well. We have hot fuzz. That's another part of our police force. <laughs> oh, as well. oh, there you go. Brilliant. Yeah, yeah. That is exactly what our police force is like. Yeah, hot fuzz. We've got Fargo. <laughs> Fargo. Reno nine one one. Yeah. Brooklyn nine yeah. nine. Yeah. 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 We're, we're familiar with you guys. Yeah, we're familiar with you. Yeah. <laughs> we are, oh, yeah. indeed. There you go. Dude, we okay. were watching Baywatch too. Yeah, <laughs> that's, not the, that's not the police. That's just some lifeguards. Well, dude, they don't do their jobs. Like, we they are watching... shit at their jobs. Well, the oh, new one, the old one, both. So, so Eric found a channel that's literally exclusively Baywatch, <laughs> and so like we've I been watching right Baywatch. <laughs> They watch and Bob Ross is like all we watch. And wow. um, so they don't like the whole show is based off of them, like not doing their job. Yeah. And the, and the funding of this lifeguard team is incredible. <laughs> they have like all the state of the art technology at their disposal and they destroy it. Dude, like, they exactly. Really, In the name yeah. of the world. It. Yeah, it's crazy. <clears throat> no, I, I'm yeah. surprised how much they afford the slow mo cameras. Oh, yeah. Well, dude, we watched like a five minute montage of them in like a hovercraft. <laughs> yeah, they really yeah. built the montage. It's so 80s. It is. It must be. And, and to think all those poor people who have ended up suffering and perishing because they've just been caught in slow-mo. Well, the yeah. That, well, that's what we were, we were saying. It's like there's probably people like drowning and they're just like too busy in their hovercraft. And like actually a little bit about Russia Spring. Getting really bad about about written is about Baywatch. <laughs> yeah, it all goes back to Baywatch. Yeah. There you go. You're you right, Tom. <laughs> Sorry, yeah, I was just doing. Uh, I was just doing this, the Baywatch slow mo. Like I can't even get you. Yeah. Uh, it's just someone on the side having like in in the UK. This would never happen. Bear in mind, like Baywatch in the UK, you'd be like, "Oi, there's someone drowning over there. Do you want to go in the fucking ocean and get them?" Do we actually have lifeguards? In the- we do, probably. <laughs> I don't know why they would end up being so though. aggressively Mancunian as well. <laughs> it's just like the- <laughs> People on the beach are like, do you want to go in and save him, all right? <laughs> all right. Yeah. The very I, aggressive Mancunian on that beach. <laughs> I don't think I've ever seen a lifeguard on the beach in the UK before. I've seen I've, a couple. You know, they're the pools, always there. yeah, I've seen them, but not Oh, yeah, not they're always the in Butlins or Pontins, aren't they? They're on the pool, like, blowing a whistle, like, Psh, well, I can't whistle. So can we edit? If we can edit a whistle back yeah. then. Uh, <laughs> it's okay, I can't whistle either. So, I can't <laughs> whistle. I'll have to teach you, Tom. I can whistle that six different ways, so you're all right. Good teacher here. <laughs> anyway, should we listen to your first song? <laughs> yeah, let's do it. Should we do groceries? We said about it sure. earlier. So sure. yeah, awesome. Enjoy. So here is uh, Rushing Spring and groceries.
Pump to the front. Pump to the front. Your friends are waiting. a sick track that was really awesome really oh, yeah. enjoyed listening to that <clears throat> yeah that was really cool so I mean, what's the story behind the name of it and the kind of the track in general there so i wrote that song in like 10 minutes um, nice <laughs> not bad <laughs> <laughs> uh, no it's weird man with like writing is for me it's like certain songs like every song has like a different need so to speak like sometimes like i'll sit down and like literally like 10 minutes will come out like perfect and i don't have to do any editing or anything and i'll be like how the fuck did i just do that oh. and then like other times like i'll be working on something for like a fucking month and it just like isn't coming together and but like i can't force it because like when you force it it just it turns out garbage so it's just like you kind of got to wait for the inspiration to hit and that was one of the ones that just came out really mm -hmm. really naturally um i wrote that oh my god well it's almost been like it's been over a year yeah definitely Shit. but um it was like, it's about dealing with like a breakup. And um, so the, the, where the name comes from is it says, um, I remember the first time you promised me we could be happy like the normal people we see at the fucking grocery store or running errands with so many places to be. That is a sick That's lyric. Like, <laughs> you know, I so think, we I think it's a very beautiful one, yeah. yeah I think yeah. we've all, breakup wise, we've all been there. And, I, I, and that course. crave for normality as well is something that is just overlooked in relationships yeah, so yeah. Many yeah. Times. and um you know it's weird like <laughs> i've kind of had like a little bit of um a non-traditional life in that sense where it's like i didn't go to college you know i ended up starting i run my own company and all of this stuff so it's like i never really went with the flow but like there's always been like that internal craving <laughs> like hey what if i did that and this kind of expresses that a little bit yeah um you know it was very and like the lyrics to it are very literal. So it's like, and so you're gone. And now it's just a memory of waiting up till dawn with your, uh, with your house in the rear view mirror. And it's cause, uh, I, the particular ex that I was writing about, don't, I hope she's not watching this. <laughs> she's actually right yeah, here. She's right here. <laughs> Let but, me just um, get her out right here. <laughs> yeah, I used Why are you in the UK for? Up, uh, <laughs> I used to pick her up early in the morning. So that's what it's talking about is um, picking her up and driving out. And so it's like, that's just a memory now. So like, there's some literal parts in it. You know, a lot of yeah. my songs, a lot of our songs is like, <clears throat> there's fiction, there's little tidbits of truth and parts of me and everything. But, you know, it's more fun to spin it and kind of like do what you will and kind of make it its own thing. So it's a yeah, little of bit course. of <clears throat> Of course. I mean, what I, sorry, go on. No, what sorry about that one. Um, fun facts there's a sample at the end of that where you can hear a grocery store right and, yeah <laughs> yeah and so uh it says over the intercom hope to the front hope to the front your friends are waiting and um we actually recorded that in a real grocery store <laughs> right that's amazing i love yeah, that so i had a buddy who worked at a grocery store and i went in there with my little phone um went up to the intercom and he went and did it real quick for us <laughs> Brilliant. He was actually fired after that. It was the yeah. Season. yeah, right. And he took us to court over it. And it was a whole yeah. big thing. Just we like fucking hell. Yeah. Yeah, rushing right, spring, dear. rushing lawsuit. Ha! Yeah. <laughs> That's it. Yeah. Just in. Let's get this. Yeah, shit right. Through. There you go. But yeah, and I was gonna say, I used to write lyrics quite a bit when I was younger because I I was in a band, and yeah, oh. I was the main kind of lyric writer slash guitarist. We try and write them together. Um, but it's all about your influences in life. I mean, if, if you didn't write about that, then I don't think there's any point in writing lyrics because for you, when you write something, there's always someone that's going through exactly the same thing as you. So you reach out to them and help them in a sense. So well, also, that's yeah, what I love about that. Even like building off of that and kind of going back to what you said, like if you look at the the lyrics at the big the big kind of ending to it is um actually it's very self aware because it goes um uh, are you alone or am I just another note in your diary so please just let me know because I'm sick of writing the same songs always using the same chords and I know I swear I'm not unstable I'm just unsure. <laughs> You know, so it's yeah. like very self-awareness. And um, at that time, I was kind of in a rut as a writer. 
And yeah. I mean, I've been writing songs since I was like 11. I've been playing guitar since I was six. So it's um that kind of broke out Amazing. And, um, and I was like, oh shit, we have something here. And that was kind of, it ended up being like the first single that we actually have up on Spotify. That was like the first one that dropped and kind of got us with the management companies and all that stuff. And it was like, That's cool. you could feel at the time when I wrote it, like, it was like, okay, this is something new. Yeah, definitely. Well, I'd say, well, I think I've said this on every podcast since, but AJ said, <clears throat> if you have one good song from AJ from Makeout, if you have one good song, and you drop it to management companies and labels, if they like it, then then yeah, you're, you're set. Um, and I mean, we've had so many bands send us songs through and they're just not produced well at all. And it, it puts us off to put it on the podcast. And right. I'm sure it puts off fans as well. I mean, if it's not produced properly, then... <laughs> to kind of like uh, mm-hmm. to go over that and just be like it's it's not it's difficult because we appreciate the time and effort that goes of course i'm ashamed and no, no, i'm not i'm not but sometimes there is this i'm i'm really <clears> particular with what i like so for example if i let me restart that i'm very particular with what i like however if i like something and i really really like it i will listen to it like like that i'll be hooked on it an example of that recently, there's a guy that um, posted an ad on Instagram, Target ad, a guy called Thrones. He posted a song called Overview. He's got like 200 listeners on Spotify, very new, and I've been hooked ever since. It's been on my repeat weeklies now for about two weeks, been talking to him on Instagram. It's a sound that's very similar to like Jeremy Zucker, Love, those kind of people. So it's, it's right on my street. And then For You The Moon, who we're going to be getting on the podcast um, have had one song. They're signed to Slam Dunk Records. Yeah. And they released Talk at, um, on the 5th. Yes. So, fifth, yeah, fifth. yeah. So, no, sorry. They March. released Talk, which was um, a couple of days ago. And when recording. Yeah, when recording. <laughs> so, so, I think it was the fourth. No, it was the third. They released it on the third. Sorry, I do apologize. And just fell in love with it. It's, it's, I've just been hooked on it and I can't stop listening to it. And it's another breakup song. It's another song it's about... Awesome. Uh, breakup for the best. Yeah, with... Uh, with all the the song, sorry. <laughs> and then we have other bands that send in stuff. And I've had bands that send stuff and it's it's not hooked me for whatever mm. reason. Sometimes it's the lyrics are too overpowering and it didn't really make sense. Sometimes it's just timings are off. Sometimes it's the music overstems the vocals. Yeah. And so why it kind of just goes, well, it's good, but it's... I, I'm not passionate about it, therefore I can't be passionate about that. So I have to be honest with them. And I hate doing that because I know how much it means yeah. to them. Yeah, of course. Right. Yeah. And well, like, that's a huge compliment side. to us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, we'll take no, it. Uh, hey, you guys are shit. We'll take whatever we can get. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, a good set, a good, a good three out of ten. Uh, yeah, it's just the <laughs> worst we've ever heard. Is that right? Well, then I hate to see the people you turned down. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Honestly, man, you you should have heard no. it. Mark Hoppus was pissed when I said I didn't <laughs> like all the small things. And he was no, like, well, I, I, I say that, but I think I've only ever turned down three bands potentially. Oh, it's, okay. it's not not that many, but yeah. I just I I feel like for me, it's all about the as Tom said, the production. So if the, the, the vocals are, you can't quite hear them. And I think, well, I don't know. There's something not quite right. And I don't think it catches you. Even if it's a fucking amazing song, yeah. if that's wrong, I don't know. It just doesn't work. So yeah, dude, I'm so, I'm so mm-hmm. anal about my vocals in production too, is cause like I, there's some, you wouldn't believe how many actual vocal tracks are like on those tracks. Yeah. That you're hearing. <laughs> cause like, so the way that we do it is like, there's like my lead vocal and then there's d- two doubles of that that are lower and then there's <laughs> one to that and it's all like okay. pan stereo spread. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I, I do, um, I create videos at work and do voiceovers for those videos. Yeah. And I, uh, the, 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 the Premiere Pro folder at work the vocals is i must say there's there's probably about a thousand tracks in there <laughs> just because i, I do it about it. 20 times i like that no, that wasn't right Let's oh do it again. <laughs> i'm the same way with layering guitars too like yeah. uh with that song actually groceries that we listened to um like the guys pulled me aside and they're like is this like this is like almost too much guitar <laughs> and i like went to our producer and i was like pace 
is this too much guitars? And he's like, I mean, it's getting there. So you should <laughs> probably stop. It's getting there. But, you know, we, we hit a nice, I feel like we hit a pretty decent balance with it. So we're good, you know? <laughs> yeah, we were, we were pretty new in the studio realm when we recorded that too. So a lot yeah. of that was just kind of experimenting and getting used to that atmosphere. So, but I think the end product, uh, it turned out very well. I mean, given the circumstance, it was a new thing for us, but that's definitely like a, a band favorite. I think because yeah. it was ahead of its time. I think when we yeah. kind of wrote that. Well, it kind of like put us to where to we are stuff. now. Like I wouldn't. I feel like the, I mean, it's only right that you guys play that song first because that's kind of the song that started it all for us. Yeah, yeah, actually. You know what I mean? So it's like, and it's done well on Spotify. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah, it's done really well on Spotify. Credit with credit to you. You guys have done really, really well. Um, Thanks, man. You know, okay. as a new band, it's kind of like there's like a sea <clears throat> of new bands all the time and it's kind of like about for me at least it's like a i'm competitive as fuck yeah. <laughs> so that definitely helps so it's just like about that grind you know working hard and being like hey you oh, know exactly it was a little bit of a challenge for us because we're a live band so it's like we are okay. most in our element when we're playing live yeah so that was a hard like, year yeah so when yeah. covid hit like you know, we were used to like having like, you know, dealing with the mosh pits and like, we knew that if we could get somebody to the show that yeah. we would convert them to a fan. Yeah. So it was yeah. like we kind of had to rethink about the way that we um, promoted ourselves, so to speak. Yeah. Yeah. That's similar to a band I had on uh, before Tom was a co-host, uh, a band called Slacker. Um, um, there, yeah, yeah. The UK band, ma uh, massive upcoming band in the UK. I think they're going to be big in the scene the next couple of years. But they're a hundred percent a live band. I mean, their tracks are insane when they bring them out; they're amazing. But they always said they said they said on the podcast. I mean, during lockdown, they still played gigs, but they were the the limited gigs, so they only had maximum ten people in a show or something like that. Yeah. That's a sold but out they... crap for us. Yeah. <laughs> 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 just see beat basement. yourself up like that yeah, all right okay. <laughs> no dude our last gig was good man our last gig was over a year ago though it was in february of 2020 february 15th at stella blues in new haven and we had we packed that room it was like 120 people like yeah that was a pretty fun night popped in there huge mosh pit we got blacklisted for that cake oh, really? <laughs> yeah because um i didn't we didn't know that there was a no moshing rule um, and like <laughs> always check if you, the you heard the song i mean like it's kind of hard not to so like we didn't tell them the mosh but like they moshed and then <laughs> and like the owner ran in and started breaking everything up and all that oh, stuff and, like so get up. after that we were God like hey, guys, no more moshing, moshing. you know terrible. <laughs> terrible all right talking about mosh pits i'm gonna jump on to a day to remember so oh yeah they dropped okay the so as there, you right? can see i'm wearing a top they are one of my favorite bands of all time, 100% in my top 10. Mm -hmm. And I, I like the album that they brought out. I listened to it before the podcast and I like it. However, it's not a day to remember. And I put that on a group, a pop punk kids group, pop punk kids group, a pop punk group, not pop punk kids. And people were arguing with me saying, oh, people can change. Oh, blah, blah, blah. Like this. Yeah, of course. And I get that. 100% people can change but going from a day to remember to imagine dragons is <laughs> very different <laughs> in some songs yes I mean there's obviously you've got mesmerized um oh, I can't think of any tracks now the the first few they brought out last year brick the beginning wall. of last year what's that brick wall was one of them I think brick wall potentially that's going towards the American dragons the bronze previous to that Degenerates. Mind, like mind readers mind reader and degenerates that's the one yeah so readers. yeah not mesmerized i don't know that, that's not even them so yeah mind reader and degenerate so those tracks are fantastic and that's the kind of evolution that i thought a day to remember would go right mm -hmm. but then some of the tracks in there honestly sound like imagine dragons and i'm like how how is that possible i don't get it i enjoy yeah. it because i love imagine dragons and mm -hmm. I love a day to remember and I kind of like that new sound, but I'm just like, <laughs> that's not them. I'm like, what are you doing? 
but then again, know. as like an artist, like I feel like obviously like everybody has the right to evolve, and like I feel like people are always very quick to like label shit as like sellout and stuff like that, and it's like. I have no problem with somebody taking like a more poppy direction if that's like where they're already headed. But like, for me, it's like when there's like that sudden change and you're like, oh yeah, they did just did this because they want to hit. Yeah. That's yeah. kind of where I'm like, mm, you know what I mean? But I don't really, um, I haven't heard any of a day to remember's new shit. So I'll have yeah. to go check it it's out. It's not, it's know? not bad music. Sorry, Tom, go on. I, I was going to say, I haven't heard any of it either. No. Uh, yeah. Terrible. You should, Tom. You, you're on a punk. You're I, on a punk podcast now. You need to listen I, to all I, this I, stuff. Yeah, I, know. I mean, I really should. Trust me, I really should. Unfortunately, I've kind of been hooked with "For You the Moon" at the moment. True. Yeah, true. Has there literally go. changed my life. Yeah, yeah, I don't know, man. It's weird. I don't listen to. I, for somebody that plays in a pop punk band, I don't listen to enough pop punk. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. There you go. Why, it's it's just the targeted ads that happen. That's how I get hooked. Uh, yeah, I'm exactly the same do, now. Yeah, yeah, it's just Ooh, I scroll through right Instagram down. and no, genuinely, if you want people to click on your your stuff, do targeted ads via Instagram stories. You get fans like me. Who they yeah, that's what we currently um, message you on Insta. We, we do run some stuff like that, but I'll have to make sure that next time when we're doing like targeting, I'll just have to type in Tom. That's it. I yeah. mean, yeah, just type in my demographic. <laughs> the Tom like, demographic. No, I'm just going to type in <laughs> Tom your demographic. Oh, right. right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. She like targets me and be like, I know these guys. They're Russian <laughs> sprints. <laughs> So what's your address? We'll target to you. Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. I'll pick that over to you now. Don't worry. Yeah. Yeah, no, don't go. share my OnlyFans. No, don't use it. Oh, yeah, exactly. yeah. From now on, I'm only targeting our ads specifically to Tom Hawkins. Right, yeah. Thank you as much. That's it. And me. And me. Oh, yeah. fuck you, Tim. No, no, this is my shit now. I've already converted, Tim. I just have to get you. <laughs> you can never convert me. I will stand here on my high ledge oh, and be dear. like, ah, the ultimate non-converter to your yeah, right. music. Every single ad that you ever see from now on will just be rushing spring because I'm just yeah. sitting on the computer just typing. It will just be like it will, like the John Cena prank call. Effectively, what it will be, it will just be like random ads that just turn into you guys. Yeah, yeah. Just be like groceries <laughs> will start playing. That's what be what it happened. Like, oh wow, this is a really cool song by Washi. Wait a second. Oh yeah. And Wait a second. That's rushing spring. Yeah, we're gonna come in sneaky, dude. You're gonna see like an American Eagle ad or something, and you're gonna be like, Wait a second. I know that model. It's just going to be me. Just like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Brilliant. <laughs> Love that. Just like a double take. Be like, how the fuck did they do that? <laughs> it's, just, oh, dear. it's like some blonde bombshell. I'm like, wow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I'm interested. It's like a Hollister model. I'm like, yeah. It's also yeah. from R- Russian Springs. <laughs> Fucking mind blowing. How is he doing this that? Blonde hair check and it just turns around. It's just my face. And it's like, He's just yeah. like this is the Russian Springs. <laughs> Listen. <laughs> Like, okay, okay, listen, listen, just leave me alone. Oh, dear. There we go. Okay, another band I want to talk about. And for me, I think this is going to be an album to beat for the year. And Tom, do you know what what I'm going to say? Machine Gun. But this year, Tom. Oh, oh, we're talking about Machine Gun Kelly. No, no. Ignore <laughs> that for now. Come on, Tom. Who's my favourite band at the moment? The album that I told you the other day Data was like remember? the best. Rushing Spring. Russian Spring, that's the one. Oh my god, have you heard Russian Spring's new album? <laughs> no, it's it's Architects. I knew it was oh, Architects. Architect. I was only teasing. Um, yeah, it's a fantastic album. It's unbelievable. Yeah, all right, yeah. they are a band that have changed. That hundred percent, they've changed their sound. However, they've done it kind of gradually. They they've because they, I say this every time, but because they lost probably a most important man member, man member, band member. <laughs> Man, yeah band member um they yeah they had to change the sound because he kind of brought the essence that he did right so over the few years they've kind of evolved and they've brought back a bit of that old sound and oh, it's just it's beautiful it's absolutely beautiful i love it so Dude, much that's right i'll have to check it out man you know like i said Seriously. i'm super uh, you gotta write all this stuff down for me man because i'm uh i'll, I'll pop it over to this <laughs> right you should be writing it down yourself but seriously we've not, we've not um... picked carousel kings back about the playlist yet <laughs> well, yeah, we're terrible at like that i'll send you something over yeah we'll send it all over we're shit <laughs> All our fans think we're really diligent. We're just pinging stuff over off the podcast. We're not. We forget about it. <laughs> <laughs> What's your podcast? I, you go in the pile. You go in the pile. When I come to edit it, I'm like, oh shit, I need to send this to so and so. I'm like, yeah, oh, there you go. And we so, forget. Yeah. And, and then we and then we do the next podcast. That's it. Yeah. Well, see what my album of the year last year was was um, "You'll Be Fine" by Hot Mulligan. 
that album. Uh, Hot Mulligan had a decently. That, year, that was a year. good year. Yeah. Yeah, oh, that was a God, good year dude. for them. That album mm. ripped so yeah, hard. It was a good album. I said, I think one of my faves was um, Knuckle Puck, actually, 2020. Yeah, Knuckle oh, Puck's yeah, album was Knuckle a Puck, decent. Yeah. That, that album slapped. I've never used that word before, but it did. So oh, there you go. Knuckle Puck slaps, though. They're good. Yeah, they're, really they're good. I don't know what they do. They're but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have Come to on, Tom. now. <laughs> Mod Sun. Oh, okay. Wow. I thought you were going to say Machine Gun Kelly there. <laughs> what? You want to chat about Machine Gun Kelly? Okay, Tim. Let's chat about Machine Gun Kelly. All Let's right. Not. Let's chat about Let's no, have a Tim. podcast without him. Come on. Mod no, son. no. I want to bring him up because I've been listening to him again and I yep. like his music. It's good. Well, thanks What's to Travis Barker. <laughs> if it wasn't for Travis Barker, that album probably would not be what it I, is. I agree. He is, I completely you know, agree. The heart of yeah. pop punk and he's kind of fueling. That yeah. career path for him. I'm He's just doing that for a lot of bands now, or artists. He is. Has he done that for Mod Sun as well? Does he produce Mod I Sun? So. I think he's behind Mod Sun. Um, yeah. As far as MGK goes, man, like I respect the fuck out of what he's doing. Like honestly, like I don't know. People are jealous, you know, so they're very quick to be like, "Oh, it's like I put in all this work, and then Machine Gun Kelly can just come in and just drop an album." And it's like, yeah, but he built his fan base way before this. You yeah, know what I mean? exactly. This is a natural yeah. transition towards more of his influences. Um, was I a particular fan of the record? You guys are going to hate me. I wasn't a huge into it. I, I mean, it's like fine. It you're opinion. You know, but I respect the fuck out of what he's doing. And here's the thing, right? It's like, as an artist, right? His job is to elicit emotion. That mm. is his job. And the fact that so many people are talking about it proves that he did his job. Yeah. I have not, I, I've said this many times and the reason I bring it up is because it's probably the, it sounds so douchey because I don't want to be one of those guys, even though I've got an Eden tattoo and Eden as <laughs> music wise means a hell of a lot to me because it's not just the music, it's the friendship and right. like closer teams like that. Machine Kelly on the other hand is the probably the only album I've listened to from front to back, front to back, front to back, front to back, constantly, couldn't fault it. Extended version came out, couldn't fault Ooh. it. And mm. I, I just, it gave me something that I didn't know I needed. It gave yeah. me every bit of happiness that I didn't know I needed. It gave me the points where I just needed to remind myself what sadness feels like. It just reminds you of pop punk and why you, mm. it, I think Halfway Atlantic described it really well. It's cookie, it's cookie cutter. It's, yeah, it's definitely. very stereotypical, but it's almost a love letter to the yeah. genre and that's cool. how i see it it's it, and my appreciation to that is it's this love letter to to the genre and i love it i love it so much because it reminded me of how much i love music songs like jawbreaker split a pill drunk face um i'm just trying to remember that so hangover cure forget me I, I could go on i could lift literally the whole album and just cool. be like i love all of them for this reason i went for a drive um when we were going between full-on stay-at-home lockdown and stay-at-home guidance. <laughs> I went for a drive, put on tickets for my downpour and just cruised, and it was beautiful. I, I haven't sang along to a whole artist <clears> music <throat> like that for ages, and that's why I vouch for it. That's why I've got such an emotive response oh, yeah. to mm. MGK, because you listen to something and you go, actually, this this doesn't describe me, but I can empathise with this. I can't empathise with splitting pills. I can't empathise with being hung over and doing weed and stuff, but I can empathize with the feelings that may come from that, that feeling of euphoria, right. that feeling of being down. I can empathize with that. I can get down with that. In fact, I really like it. It's really right. cool. And well, see, that's the thing is he's great at communicating emotion, right? And like it exactly. or not, right? The pop punk genre was dying, right? It was mm. dying. We were letting it die, you know? Yeah. And um, yeah. the fact that he's so, <clears throat> that he was able to bring this and bring us back to the forefront, it gives smaller bands like us the opportunity where we can be like hey now that you're already here why don't you check out a little bit more of the in-depth stuff and you know go into the scene a little bit and it's pulling in new fans oh yeah you know? and that's I, he is like, yeah he is and it, uh, yeah i respect him for that as well i don't love the album as much as tom i love the album don't get me wrong but i don't love yeah, it, it as much fun. as this guy uh he's yeah. he's a bit of a fan eat your tongue <laughs> a little bit but the point being bit. as my it's like a spotlight put on so i just went on to tickets to my downfall sold out deluxe edition and scroll down to the bottom on spotify the four thing the, the kind of six bits and pieces that come up are about the best rock songs of 2020 pop punk's not dead pop punk people pure pop punk the scene etc so just to click on that so to click on pop punk's not dead we've got bands like mod sun all time low point north stand atlantic the home team grayscale Eat Your Heart Out, 
Never kept, sundress, neck deep, simple creatures, day to remember. All right. right. And and all of these bands are going to be linked in some way back to you guys. So right. it's going to be someone that's going to go bang, 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 yeah. pinball effect and end up with you guys. So I don't understand it, much as you love or hate his right. music. It's good for the scene. And that's the it's thing. Is like that's how yeah. got in the scene. You know what I mean? Like when I was that's a kid, right. you know, I found Green Day. And then through the magic of YouTube, I was able to go and find like, oh, OK, well, here's Operation Ivy. Here's my yeah. You know, who's here's Fugazi and all of this stuff, and like led me into like the kind of taste that I have now. And without like Green Day as that starting point, which for these kids I feel like it's going to be MGK. Yeah, yeah. Know, I would have never known about <clears throat> all these phenomenal bands that I love. Exactly. Yeah. There you go. Well, on that note, I'll say <laughs> he's 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 a bit of a somebody in the scene at the moment. And yeah, yeah let's play your track. What a transition. Somebody. Okay. There we I'm go. getting good at these transitions. Oh, this man, man. his transitions, <laughs> just fucking mind blowing. So here we go. So here's somebody by Rushing Spring. Enjoy. Still rolling? Yep. Okay. Take off the sheets And look, Mom and Dad I'm finally proud of me So many places Yet nowhere to be But it seems everyone Always knows somebody Who makes them laugh until they cry But I don't know why Every time I look in your eyes It's like we're right back how could I ever forget? And you say you're not sure What this life's got in store for you Just take it step by step You can take it minute by minute If you have to It's so odd to think We're not teenagers anymore I 
miss you a lot more than I thought I would. Awesome track. Yeah, it's the same, same for it. Very chill track. So very different to groceries. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, actually, I wrote those pretty close together too. That was yeah. like anywhere. It's like a month later, but um, it's a waltz, so it's in three four. So it was one two three, one two three. Um, but that was a very <laughs> observational track because at the time I was um like the first line it says my floral print mattress is older than me and I was sleeping on a donated mattress at the time that had floral yeah. print. <laughs> You know what I mean? Or like the the big chorus, it goes, um, well, I'm sitting in a dark room, it's four in the afternoon and I'm waiting for somebody and that someone is you. And I was actually waiting on my girlfriend at the time and I was in a dark room at four in the afternoon. <laughs> Very literal writing. Yes. Yeah, yeah, Literally. yeah. You know, not much going on up here at the time. But... <clears throat> no, it's good. I mean, it's, 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 a, it's a nice song. I could I could definitely chill out to that track. Um, yeah my, i mean my favorite it, so. part i think my favorite line out of that whole thing was i can't help but think them getting complacent but the real world is so scary and on god that makes me anxious you know because it talks about kind <clears> of like <throat> growing up and like i'm in my early 20s i still feel like a teenager i still feel like i'm 14 years old you know what i mean but then there's yeah. like at the same time like i'm paying a car payment i'm paying like you know, adulting insurance and oh, yeah. are you I'm, <laughs> I'm bullying eric on the internet to join my band and you know <laughs> it's like i'm doing all this adult stuff but at the same time like it's like i feel like i'm kind of just like still like a kid in a way and like i talked like i've talked to my dad about that and he's like that doesn't go away <laughs> he's like it's like imposter syndrome you know yeah. <laughs> i'd say I, I feel old on all of these podcasts it's how <laughs> i really do Sorry, how old are you guys? Yeah, I was gonna say, how old are you guys? So I'm 22. Um, Eric's 24. Yep. Um, wow. Hey, 24 club, me and Eric. Yup. Nice. Yeah. So it's actually 53. Um, <laughs> it's really wow. surprising. Take off 20, and you've got your number. Add 15. <laughs> then, Minus 15. Um, <laughs> and then Kevin of... and Jake are also 22 and 24. So like between, no. if you add it all up, average age is 23. But none of us are 23. But no one loves you when you're 23. Yeah, so right, exactly. So we get right yeah. around that number. You know yeah, what I mean? yeah. I can't. I, I hate bringing this up, but genuinely, I got a cake for my birthday on my 23rd that says, "Nobody loves you when you're 23," and that was from my girlfriend. And then two weeks later, we broke up. Uh, <laughs> oh, like it's oh, just because no. you didn't. <laughs> oh, you have the song for you. <laughs> Let me tell you, all right, I've joked about this so many times, but oh, if there dear. was writers for my life, that is the shoddiest bit of writing in history because the foreshadowing was just unnecessary on that. Oh, <laughs> well, I feel you, man. I um, I just went through a breakup and um, it's funny That's enough, true. it was very interesting because I believe in that whole like universe, like destiny type thing, right? Yeah. And um, you guys know that somebody premiered on Alternative Press. Yeah, and, amazing um, news. Yeah, well done, guys. Dude, it's not us, it's our manager. <laughs> well done, manager. Well done to your manager. <laughs> no, it was uh... Fine, we'll just say well done to someone. Well done, yeah, you. Yeah. Well, well done, done somebody. We had, like, it was, it was weird because we, um, like, to us, it was kind of, it's like all of these things, like, it's still like kind of imposter syndrome where it's like to see our faces up there and that kind of shit. It's like, hey, we're still like, you know, we still practice in a basement. You know what I mean? It's like, we still do all this shit, but I, uh, he calls me and he's like, Hey, so I got us alternative press and it's going to be on 225. And that's my ex's birthday. And she had broken up with me. So it was very much like, okay, you're choosing the band over this. You know what I mean? And it was like, okay, well there, there's a reason for everything. You know what I mean? So it's cool how destiny works. And now I'm going to just start dumping my baggage on you guys. <laughs> it's fine. So it's fine. what would you say your, your, I think this is a question I, I, I haven't asked before. What would you say breakup songs are? Because pop funks is full of them, right? Pop Why do we think about breakup pop funks? Pop, pop funks. <laughs> Why do we think about breakup? Say? Because um, <clears throat> oh, I I can speak that like as a kid, what really looped me into like the love of music was David Bowie and the Beatles, right? Mm. And um, the Beatles, I always like the faster stuff, the younger version of them, and it's all love songs. Yeah. So it was kind of like engraved in me where it's like, you know, like I really like like 
the whole aspect of like falling in love, falling out of love, kind of like that middle part in between it. And like writing about it is something that is you like universally relatable, you know, like I can't say that somebody knows what it's like to go through a heroin withdrawal, but I can say that somebody most like nine out of 10 people are going to know what it's like to be falling in love or fall out of love. And it's something that people can relate to. And um, it's also <clears throat> something that elicits a lot of emotion too. Exactly. That's why, that's why, I mean, all genres write about yeah. love. Of course they do. It, it's, right. it's, it's, it's there. It's everywhere. I mean, we have to write about it. I mean, um, and lately, I mean, architects, for example, again, they're writing more about kind of environmental stuff. Then there's other bands like, um, I don't know, I can't think of any now. My mind's gone completely blank. But yeah, I mean, there's only those certain maybe 10 things <laughs> that people write about. I mean, it's, it's always going to be the case because you want to, as I said before, you want to connect with your audience, your listeners. Right. So, and you're going to with those kind of things. So, right. Well, it's weird because it's like, it's not very, it's, it sounds when we put it like that, it sounds a lot more intentional than it actually is. You know what I mean? For me, like writing is more of like, I hesitate to call it a defense mechanism, but like when I'm writing, like there's this very, like, I don't know how to explain it. Like I get into these moods where it's just like, okay, something's about to come out. You know what I mean? It's not always about love. You know, a lot of stuff is about love or cause like, but I usually, um, I, I have like, I don't know how to explain it. It's like something's coming. And then like, if I just kind of vomit it out onto a paper yeah. and then just like, Oh, okay, here it is. You know what I mean? And, um, we have a running joke in the band that like every time I write a song, I bring it to the band and I'm like, this is the best thing I've ever written. Yeah. <laughs> is that right? <laughs> Which I mean, I guess is a good thing. Cause you always want to be progressing as a writer, but I can definitely vouch that some of the stuff that I've brought in and been like, this is the best thing was definitely not the best thing. Yeah. But like, <laughs> oh, you know, dude. it's one of those things where it's like, you want to be constantly growing. You do want to try and find new topics. Um, exactly. You know. Yeah. I mean, yeah, my, my old band, my guitarist always said to me, Tim, what's this song about? Feelings by any chance. <laughs> it's like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it is. Has it got the word feelings in it? Yeah. No. <laughs> Sorry. Same we'll we'll take that out. <laughs> yeah. I, I used to, yeah. I think every, a lot of people just write about what they feel, right? So love is, it's a weird one because love is something we all know. And yet philosophically speaking, no one actually knows if that makes sense. Right. Like, this is why we write about it so much because we're kind of like, I think I've got a good idea of what this is. <laughs> and, 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 and then we're like, actually, we don't when we lose it. We're like, actually, that wasn't it. Maybe I don't know. We have this kind of like existential crisis of going, what is love? And no. my mind. What is love? Yeah. Fuck you. Yeah. This is where my going was going. Baby, I was like, don't right hurt here. me. <laughs> don't hurt me. No, no more. <laughs> no, that's not what love is. Uh, what uh, that is not what it is. That's not what is love. <laughs> that you don't hurt me. Don't hurt me no more. It's like it's great. Yeah, you know what? Yeah. Now I'm gonna have to cover that in a separate bit about how there's like songs that immediately you say a lyric of, and then you have to finish off like the action. Yeah. One of them. Like that. Sorry, you're not a winner. I've mentioned it in many podcasts by Enter Shikari. If you don't clap, the Enter Shikari gods are gonna kill you. Um, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's those kind of songs but just tying it back to the original thing i had a couple of ones going through various breakups in my life where it was sleeping with sirens we had with ears to ears to see and eyes to hear from their acoustic album yeah. and the the lyric that always stuck with me was so tell me uh how does it feel how does it feel to be like you i think that you should your your i think it's like i think you should be quiet because you never tell the truth Ooh. or something like that yeah uh, yeah, I, yeah, it was something. It was something like beautiful like that. And then I've been listening to stuff like in our own words recently. I'm not. I'm not going for a breakup. In a very stable relationship, I'm very happy. But Ooh. there's like the, all these really good songs that emit those kind of feelings of sadness. So it's. But you know, it's funny because I um I enjoy crafting a good breakup song probably more than I like writing like a it falling in love song. Cause it's just, it's just fun. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's, it's, it's the sadness. And um, I find myself like, I'll be like in a solid relationship and I will be like making fake breakup songs, Brilliant. you know, just working on like kind of that shit. <laughs> where it's like looking at my past and kind of analyzing it. And, you know, yeah. um, the other thing I like writing about a lot is uh, infatuation too, cause it's different. Yeah. 
you know definitely like, uh tim i know you're a big green day fan going to pasolacqua green day fan. yeah what's that sorry going to pasolacqua do you know that song i can't think of it off the top of my head on me. dude 1039 smooth out slappy hours their very first album going to pasolacqua you have to listen to i will it. have a listen i don't remember my that one favorite the song by them it's okay instant. I'll have, yeah, I mean, they they were one of my first bands, really. I mean, I, I think probably they were one of the first, they were the first pop punk band I heard. Yeah, and then too. And then for me, I heard Good Charlotte. Okay. And personally, I'd preferred them. So I think for me, Good <laughs> Charlotte are my favourite band of all time. They always will be. Wow. And I, I cannot wait good. for new music. I cannot wait. Last December was an awesome track. They're going back to their kind of, second album third album oh so, yeah i can't oh. wait oh yeah amazing yeah. <laughs> i tackled it weirdly with getting into the i think we now should just go into how we got into it because I, yeah. i've been looking back and be like actually my my first introduction to the heavier side of stuff was in the end by lincoln park on youtube i remember right. sitting in my auntie's house and i was like well i think this is what even yeah. is supposed to be like and you're like, yeah, in the end, it doesn't even matter. But I used to, I, I've mentioned it so many times. I absolutely loved wrestling. And there used to be like wrestling stuff and car crashes that used to have like a heavy song dubbed over the back. Mm. And so the first time I broke away from Linkin Park was there was a, 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 I think it was a NASCAR compilation of crashes that happened, but it had the Diary of Jane by Broken Benjamin in the back. Oh, I remember nice. clicking on that and I was like, <laughs> oh damn it's the it's the fucking drop that that song yeah, delivers that is, I haven't heard that and you're like well years, I, I've, I've, I, I've i've never experienced the emotional torrent like that and i'm like great now i'm gonna have to dye my hair black and have like you know go into the uh pop punk like you know amazing what is it yeah. eno's uh, not dead guy, uh, yeah Matt yeah Conshaw. yeah my, uh, i mean my, mine was sorry dude, what was that I said dye my hair black. I've done that way too many times. Yeah. <laughs> I dyed my hair blonde at the start of lockdown last year. And let me tell you, it ended up being ginger, but it was still rebellious enough. And therefore, I did oh. that too. Not in lockdown, but my senior year of high school, right? So my mom's a hairdresser, right? Well, she's a teacher now, but she kept her hairdressing license. So she does all my haircuts and all that stuff for free, right? Mm -hmm. So senior year in high school, I was like, mom, I want to be blonde. I want to bleach my hair, right? And she's like, no. <laughs> and I'm like, well, no. <laughs> I'm going to do it myself. So bad move. Um, I was like, like them. yeah, I have, uh, I have almost black hair to begin with. And um, I, when I dyed it, it was like a copper orange. Shit. <laughs> oh, dude, mine, came out, mine came out like a weird light blonde on the tips. <clears throat> so I ended up looking like fucking Boyle from Brooklyn Nine-Nine with frosted tips. <laughs> uh, I used to get that joke really? around, be like frosty tips, like frosty tip roast, frosty tip roast. I was like, oh, can't tell me that Boyle was not the best character on there though. Because oh no, it's gotta be Gina. It's gotta be Gina. Uh, hey, whatever, man. You know what I mean? Like, uh, <laughs> sad, like everyone. I love Gina or, so much. Yeah, or Terry Crews, man. In general, Terry Crews can do no wrong by me. Uh, my favorite, uh, genuinely yeah. though, my favorite character has only been in like three episodes of Malipnos. <laughs> oh, dude, you know who my favorite character is? Um, fuck, what's his name? Uh, he was also in the office. Is it Pamentha? Oh, 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 Pontiac Bandit. Yes, yeah. Pontiac Bandit. That <laughs> like, was fucking art. I hate to say, I haven't watched it. I'm you haven't watched it, man. It's so no, it's, it's something, something on our list. Lucy kept watch saying watch to me, oh, you need, we need to watch this. So, Have you watched Big Mouth system. out of interest? So no, I haven't, but my brother's huge into it. And, so Jay from Big Mouth is also uh, Detective Pimentha from Brooklyn Nine Nine. You know the one that Rosa dates, and he's absolutely fucking bonkers. He's yeah, like, yeah. I couldn't remember what letter I smashed his face out to. I think it was H or something like that. Brilliant. It's also the voice of Jay uh, from Big Mouth. I love <laughs> that, dude. I love that TV show. So every time I see Jay, go. I'm immediately like, "Fuck, man, this guy's a nuts from Brooklyn Nine Nine." <laughs> yeah, there we Yo. go. Okay, talking about TV and films. We're not talking about films. We're talking about TV. But next track is Breakfast Club Fanatic. So there we go. Fanfic. Fanfic. Fanfiction. Okay. Sorry, fanfic. I do apologize. Breakfast Club Fanfic by Rushing Spring. Enjoy. Enjoy. <laughs> Yeah. 
amazing track. I love that one. My favorite of yours, I think, that I've listened to you know, today. Um, one of my personal favorites. I wrote that. Um, it was funny because when I wrote the the chorus guitar part to it, I thought that I was ripping somebody else off. And I was like convinced that it was somebody else's riff. And I sat on it for like a month. And uh, I finally sent it, like I posted it on Facebook to like my friends. I was like, who is this? And nobody could tell me. And then I had my friend Laura hit me up and she was like, hey, I used to do label listening for a job before it was all computerized. And like, I, I think you're good. Like, I think this is yours. And so I was like, sweet, I'm going to write something with it. And I ended up writing it about, um, there's like a whole subgenre of uh, people that are online that like will post like vintage stories onto their Instagram. Yeah. So like, I kind of created like this girl and like talked about like infatuation where she's basically like escaping her modern day life by posting like vintage and retro photos online. So it's kind of like tongue in cheek, but at the same time, it's also saying like, hey like i respect what you're doing and like you're hot let's date <laughs> fair enough <laughs> why not what? What? yeah where the, just like that yeah so that's kind of where the name fanfic came in you know what i mean because i'm sure okay. you guys know about fan fictions <laughs> yes we've heard many of them we, we have our own punkier fan fiction. i was about to say do you guys do? have your own fan fiction there we go no we don't it's like and then we tom don't. looked deep into tim's eyes <laughs> Just to let you know, guys, I've got to swap my camera because my battery's dying. So yeah, just before I disappear, yeah. there you go, I'm back. <laughs> I just had wow. to do that because I didn't want to die. Anyway, carry on, Tom. <laughs> oh, no, no, we've never, we've never had a fan fiction before. I don't yeah. think I've ever looked deeply in Tim's eyes before because I don't, I don't know what I would find. That's the oh, scary part. Yeah. I don't want to. I don't to. know what I would find. <laughs> no, well, maybe no. there could be, there could be heartbreak. Too. There could be, there could be love. There could be ducks. It could be sea mm. shanties. We just don't know. Well, we just don't know just what's like, behind those like, And then Tom looked deep into Tim's eyes and he saw ducks. He saw <laughs> so many ducks. And it be, that would <laughs> be the weirdest, the oh, weirdest dude. novel. It would be like, and he looked deep and he saw ducks. There were so many. Why are there so many ducks? Oh, <laughs> why are there so many ducks? <laughs> we should like, write a song about that. Ducks. There were just so many ducks. Yeah, there were so <laughs> there's, a, there's a song by uh, Lemon Jelly. All oh, the ducks are swimming in the water. <laughs> la, 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 la. <laughs> oh God, song. I've never heard of that. I was thinking of the, 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 the lemonade, the, the duck from the lemonade song. Like, um, um, oh yeah, it said to the run in the stand. Yeah. Hey, bum, bum, bum. Um, Got I'm, I'm going gonna, gonna to send lemon jelly to you now, guys. All of you, you're going to get Absolutely. it. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely ignore that. No, it's, it's a really good song. It, 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 it slaps. <laughs> <laughs> it slaps yeah anyway, it, it does things okay. it does things tom you know you know yeah. what time it is in the podcast i think it's tim's random question time i was gonna Ooh. say do we want to before you drop a random question well, should we drop on. a r- random promo for our upcoming thing what's our upcoming thing well it's it potentially might not be upcoming when we're writing this well we're this, is, this, this is this is true but oh well, well we'll we'll promote it anyway so tom go ahead so we were thinking Tim and me are extremely busy individuals who live extremely important lives. Uh, by day, I am a Superman and Tim is also Superman because I couldn't come up with anything on the spot that was more original wow. than Superman. Um, but <laughs> by <laughs> night and evening or early evening, depending on, we, are, we, we run this podcast on a weekly basis once a week and then we go back to our normal lives. The shittest version of Clark Kent and Superman. But we want to engage with more bands. And we were like, how? How do we engage with more bands? We need a powerful way of engaging people and bands at the same time we just need to hit them with a shot a shot of information a shot of something just to be like bam this is a band you need to be checking out we can't get them on the podcast right now because we do it once a week and that's it and so this is what we created punkio power shots i know fucking amazing beautiful yes tim amazing what's this all about because i've basically not summarized so yeah it's it's basically going to be shorter versions just those shots that people need so mainly going to be on kind of social media i probably will pop it onto youtube as well in a different section different playlist however it's going to be shorter just those shots that people need just to get through their day on social media so yeah we're evolving and rocking out while we're doing exactly. it yeah. cool. it's gonna so, yeah. be pretty sick the logo <laughs> is been pairing up probably around about here somewhere here yeah somewhere here but it's it's pretty sick. Check it out on social media, as Tim said. We'll be probably compiling it 
a load of them together and making one big video so those on YouTube can just watch them as they happen or just continue to check them out. But we're we're super excited. It's we all because we we we're now booking into like June, it seems. Wow. Literally, yeah. <laughs> so we are been, we are busy, 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 busy. It's because I, I since I've come on the podcast, I've just been like, hey, can we message this band? Not expecting them to come back, and they're like, yeah, sure, we'll we'll come on. I'm like, sweet, hi Tim. Guess yeah. what? Can we get this band on? And he's oh. like, how the fuck have you done that? And I'm like, I don't know. Just message them. Yeah. Like a story oh, told, for example, dear. is a band that I'm a huge fan of, and and they're coming on. They've just agreed to come on the podcast. And I'm Amazing. like, what? Gradually. Yeah. It's all these bands that I've listened to actively on Spotify, and I'm Amazing. like, hey, uh, we're getting them on. It's just this yeah. is sick. I fucking so love sick. it. Yeah, it's it pretty cool. Well, having too many bookings that you don't know what to do with is like the best problem to have. So if you're true. Guys, <laughs> so true. this is why yeah. we created the yeah. power shots like yep. something just them. so we can give more yeah. exposure to more bands and be like, yeah. hey, we really want to get you on, but we're you know, it's once a week and we both got jobs to do as well, so we can't yeah. really allocate more time. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, but yeah. Awesome. Good to know that we get the full length though. So that's yes, rad. yes. I mean, it right. doesn't matter if you're on the power <laughs> shots or on this. Let's put it that way. We would have you on oh. both. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. definitely. It also definitely means would. we can get continued engagement from the likes of you guys as well. So if we wanted to do like a more of a, a thing with you guys, we can do. We can be like, hey, yeah, we can work like a ten minute like chat. Yeah, how man. you guys being talk about a new song that you're producing, play exactly. that, yeah, and, and bits and bobs like that. So it gives exactly. us that freedom. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's all about the getting getting engagement on social with, with these new ones so should be good should be good i mean we might even go live one night maybe whatever Whoa. we'll see we'll have a look well, that's, how you, that's how you met us right was <laughs> us going live exactly yeah saw you on a live and uh i like this so yeah that was it okay so it's random time question. for tim's random question my question is if you needed to impress gordon ramsay with one dish how would you impress him and what dish would you choose um Great question. He's really putting me on the spot here, Tim. <laughs> Service! Uh, <laughs> it's just a very popular dish to use on fancy meals. So I'd probably pick you know, like a, I don't know, like a basic dish, like a lobster ravioli, and just smother it with cream fresh. Yeah. Sounds good. Cream fresh! Yeah. <laughs> so oh. For me, I think I would do, um, my mom puts this bomb thing that she showed me how to do. It's like, it's pasta with like an Alfredo, but then like on top of that, there's like um, mu- there's like mushrooms, spinach, um, sausage, um, Kalamata olives, and it's like all sauteed together. It's bomb, and um, that's probably what I would go with because I've made it so many times that I'm like safe with it. <laughs> Sounds good. But Sounds it's also good. like a level above like Kraft mac and cheese. <laughs> we'll mail you some. Yeah, yeah. Well, for fuck's sake, we've, we haven't even got a PO box set up. We're already <laughs> waiting for Wild Night to send us some pizza fucking rolls, and they haven't turned up yet. We're already having them on. Terrible. They came on the promise of pizza rolls. And oh no, terrible. Go on, Tom. Questions to you as well, and then I'll answer I mean, mine as well. I mean, I'm going to post the, the image about here of what I made recently. This was no. a beautiful the sourdough. Rolls, no, it was sourdough. 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 Yeah. sourdough. Don't, don't flatter me and say they were cheer, cheer about it. Sourdough. All right. <laughs> So I've got some sourdough good. rolls. I cut them in half, put some put some caramelized onion chutney on them. All right. Ooh. I know we're thinking it's good already. All right. And you're like, Tom, how you can get better than this? And I'm like, well, I'm gonna tell you, so stop talking over me. That's really rude of you. But um, it's I got some watercress and rocket and spinach and put that on top as well. And I was like, damn, this is going well. And then I cooked a rump steak in garlic butter, sauteed it beautifully, mm-hmm. got the sizzle just right. Don't say why I said saute, but sizzled it nicely, pan fried. About five minutes so it's a rare to medium rare let it rest get a little bit of cheddar as well and then cut it up nicely and put it on top mm. of the shea butter and, it, and had it with um seasoned fries uh in the middle and it created this beautiful dish and after having it i nearly i nearly collapsed in pure elation it, i'm not joking i was so, oh, I mean, me. like, <laughs> so like... lethargic i was doing my washing <laughs> up i was like i'm just falling asleep right now it was so much fun. It was like all the salt and like fat you just ingested. It's just like, oh my God. It's just, oh, <laughs> just, just like, there so it going. I don't think I'm going to make this, so man. <laughs> there you go. Okay, am I answering my own question as well, Tom? Yes, you're answering your own Tim's random question, Tim. What do you okay, think this cool. is? Okay, cool. So for me, again, very basic. However, I have a secret ingredient that I put in it and it's bolognese. What did you say, Tom? 
LSD. I'm thinking LSD. of Ben. <laughs> no. I'm thinking of <laughs> Brian. I'm thinking of the Futurama not that, episode. Not that <laughs> it's just like <laughs> yes, water, water, and a slight hint of LSD. <laughs> no, no, uh, we do not promote drugs on this podcast. We do not promote drugs. But Futurama <laughs> no. is fucking hilarious. But yeah, it is. It is. Um, went to Gordon Ramsay. We do not apparently. Yeah, drugs apparently. <laughs> What's that? I say, unless it's feeding them to Gordon Ramsay, we do not promote drugs on this. Podcast. Exactly, yeah, exactly. But yeah, for me, bolognese, and yeah, put a little secret ingredient in, and it is the best bolognese I've ever tasted in my life. What's so the much secret than... ingredient? I'm not going to tell you. That's a secret. Well, there we go. So there you go. green. <laughs> You'll have to try it one day. I will try one day. Yeah. Yeah, see if you can work out what a secret whole thing has is. made me so hungry, dude. I'm definitely eating right after. This. Yeah, <laughs> but but yeah, it's the secret ingredients you can you can put it in chili con carne as well. It's love. Oh, cumin? Okay. No, not cumin. It's not it's not a herb love. or a spice. It's uh, love. something very We're different to that. It's love. It is love. Uh-huh. Yes. No, he massages the bolognese <laughs> with his hands as he's cooking. <laughs> he plays like the music of the Italian. Plays the violin. Yeah. It's like you imagine the the gondola. The gondola, by, I, I don't even know what they call them. Just call them the people who use the gondola, do you feel like? The, the gondola opera. guys, yeah. Yeah, they just, he's going there, he's massaging around the pan. He, he's getting it like a doll. Massaging the bolognese, full of the love and the attention. <laughs> it is bellissimo. 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 And then he goes to the chili con carne, he gets every individual bean. He massages the bean. And before putting it into the pot, massages every <laughs> bean, putting it into the pot. That's it. You got it. There you go. And that yeah. and that is his secret ingredient, everyone. It's love, attention to love. detail, and massaging your food with unwashed hands. Uh, <laughs> Thomas, I how dare you? <laughs> oh dear. There we go. Post a right. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah, there you go. It's a call to the food standards agency. <laughs> there we go. Well, I think I think my random question is a perfect time to to end the podcast, guys. So. Dude. I want to say massive thanks for being on, guys. You've been been an epic podcast and Dude, really enjoyed ourselves. Guys. Seriously, yeah. thank you, guys. It was awesome. Yeah, no, you're, well, you're well. very welcome. And uh, yeah, best of luck in the future. And yeah, I'm I'm, I'm on social anytime. People hit me up. We can have a chat about your music and other music or whatever. So don't hit me. Oh up. yeah, bro. Same to you guys. <laughs> you got any time for you? <laughs> I haven't. I've got no time for you guys. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, except my friend request. I added you this morning on Facebook. I know, I know. I saw it. I was like, who the fuck is this guy? Ignore and I realized that. Yeah. Uh, now I know who it is. I'm still like, I don't want to add him now. He's going to probably be arrested by the FBI after this podcast. Yeah, right? <laughs> there you go. There you go. You'll see me in the news one way or another. Yeah. <laughs> that awesome. guy from Roshan Spring. <laughs> oh, <dear. laughs> Never awesome. getting your name right in the news, like in the no. news like, they're calling out Tushing Ring. And like, no, this is not our name. <laughs> Tushy Tushy Ring. Ring. Love it. I would actually uh, like to be called that. That'd be pretty cool. Tushy Ring. <laughs> <laughs> we should have a band meeting after this. We're gonna create a spin-off band. <laughs> We're everything, guys. Sorry. <laughs> Love that. All right, well, guys. We're gonna do the podcast now and take down all the music. We're changing the name. <laughs> yeah. There you go. Sounds good. Awesome dudes. Well, massive thanks for being on. Take care. Thank you, man. Later, man. Bye-bye. Thank you for listening to the Punkier Podcast with Tim and Tom. We hope you enjoyed this episode. Feel free to like, subscribe, and follow on all streaming platforms. Check out our social media pages where we'll be posting exclusive content and sneak peeks to future episodes of the podcast. We hope you enjoyed this episode and we look forward to catching you on the next one. Take care.